everyone. Thanks for uh, tuning in for the stream tonight. I am playing Montezuma's Revenge uh, featuring Panama Joe for the Sega Master System. So Montezuma's Revenge is actually a pretty old game. It was um, released in 1984 for numerous systems of the day, uh, including the Atari 8-bit computers, Atari 2600, 5200, ColecoVision, Commodore 64, IBM PCs, and it was uh, designed and programmed by Robert Jaeger and published by, published by Parker Brothers. <clears throat> um, the game was also ported to the Master System in 1988, so, and that's the version I'm playing. So, Now this is a game that I've always wanted to try, I've never played it before. I had a Sega Master System as a kid, in fact I still have it, it's up on my shelf above my computer here. Um, it is, uh, I always remember seeing it at uh, like the rental store and stuff, never got around to trying it, so I thought, well, what time better than now? Um, the gameplay style is what they consider an early, well, what they're saying now, it's a platforming game, but it's, um, Wikipedia at least says it's an early example of a Metroidvania game. We'll see if that's true or not. Um, it, and what I can say right now, what I've seen on a couple screenshots, it kind of reminds me of like Pitfall a little bit for like the old game Pitfall for like Intellivision and Atari and whatnot. So uh, we'll see how this goes though. So let me fire it up here. All right, here we go. Let's try to adjust this a little bit. There we go. Montezuma's Revenge. And anyone tuning in now, thank you ahead of time. If this happens to be on YouTube, which this stream will eventually be pushed over to, uh, feel free to subscribe um, so you can be in the know when a new video drops and uh, help out our channel. So if this is on Twitch, which we're doing right now, please uh, sub here as well. Alright, so choose level of play. Plus left or right to change level. Plus start, start key to select level. doesn't appear to be doing anything. Oh, my window isn't in view. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go with level 1 because I've never played before and start key to select a level. Okay. I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm going to try just doing a quick reset and start over without uh, going to that little screen there. So I'll probably have to do a little research after this to figure out, uh, what the heck? Okay, here lies Zoltal, a member of the ancient Chickamec tribe. It is a fairly simple tomb, but like all the burial chambers in this region, it is guarded by some unearthly forces. Here you will have to see the sights. Here you will see sights you have never seen before and may not wish to see again. Oh, cool. So this guy kind of kind of reminds me of like Indiana Jones, right? So the Sega Master System. Uh, controller is a lot like the NES controller in that it has the directional pad and then two action buttons. What it doesn't have though that the NES controller has is a start and select button. So the start button or the pause button is actually on the console on the Sega Master System. So back in the day when you wanted to pause it you had to run over to the system and hit the button on the, on the console real quick. So. But I do have that mapped to a different button on my controller, so it's like the start button, which pauses it. So it doesn't look like I can go up or down here, so 
Looks like I got good on this rope. Alright, so it looks kind of like it might be some sort of puzzle game, I'm gonna guess. So I'm gonna assume I want to avoid the skeleton head. Okay, I got a key. So this game is very much reminding me of like old television and Atari games. The graphics are a little bit, a little bit better than those, but the like the sound effects and whatnot are very reminiscent of those. So I have a key. I'm assuming I can go through the door with it. There's a snake. I'm assuming I can jump over. Okay. Treasures. Nice. So I don't know what the actual end goal is here. Just points. I probably should have read. I'm going to pause it for just a second and see if I can find the instruction manual real quick. Montezuma's Revenge Instruction. Let's see here. Obje object. To help Panama Joe safely reach Montezuma's fantastic treasures by guiding him through a through mazes of 100 death-dealing chambers within the em Emperor's Pyramid. Along the way, Joe must avoid a host of deadly creatures while he collects valuables and other tools which can help him master the evil pyramid and escape with the loot in his life. So... There are all sorts of stuff in here. As you guide Panama Joe through the pyramid, you'll encounter three major groups of elements, room fixtures, killer creatures, and special tools and rewards. So there's a whole list of them. And the game. The game ends when you have lost all of Panama Joe's lives, his original lives, and five extra lives. When he, this happens, he will disappear, and all the action will stop. If the game ends while you're playing difficulty level one, okay, blah, blah, blah. The treasure chamber. So that's the that's the goal. Is the ultimate goal is the fabulous treasure chamber. So I have to make it through all of the other chambers. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. Let's keep this going, right? So I can see why they kind of call it a Metroidvania, cause Metroidvania, because I can kind of explore whichever way I want. Now I'm assuming I don't want to step in the fire, so we'll go like this. This looks a bit scary to me. And there's a different kind of key, a red key. Okay. So, so it looks like the top left has my inventory, which is two keys and it looks like it be, might be my hats there. That must be my lives, I guess. Oh. Okay, brick wall, no good. Oh. Okay, well I lost my first life. One life down. So you can fall, die from falling. Okay, well that's the end of that. Can I get across there? Whew, that's close. So the controls are actually pretty good. You don't slide around a lot, which is nice. Well, the snake's gone now, right? And I still have my keys. Yeah, this really reminds me of like an Intellivision game. It's fun, so far. Treasure, hammer. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that item is. Okay, now what? Well, we might have to try again. We'll see how this goes. I'm assuming those will... Alright. Oh, bouncing skulls. Well, that's just nifty. So I'm going to have to like time this so that I go underneath him. 
and then jump over the snake, get the diamond. See, I have this feeling I'm gonna die here. Oh. Ah. Okay. It's like a fire pole. Okay, so this is gonna be tricky, right? Because these conveyor belts are moving. Wow. That's tricky. Okay, I'm on my last life now. I almost died there. <laughs> Alright. Game over. Oh, so on easy mode it looks like you can continue. Or level one, I should say. We'll go with it this time, because we just kind of want to see this game. Um, I'm not doing like a completionist sort of run. I swear I was on that platform. Oh, I gotta go over to the one. I see. See, you can't. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like you'd be able to jump up some of these. I need to jump to that one and then jump to that one. But the key. Son of a monkey. I'm pretty sure I want to get up that ladder there, so we gotta do this. Up. Okay, go up. Okay. Climb. Yeah, alright. So I don't want to go... That might have been that other path. Okay. <laughs> so, if I can deal with that skeleton, I actually I have a blue key. Yeah. Well, I dealt with him, didn't I? Oh, I see. So if you have the sword and then something hits you, it's like uh, you kill it. I get it. That's pretty cool. Good to know. Those spiders are kind of creepy looking to me. So I went that way before, let's go this way. Nice. Alright, let's see here. So, it controls okay. I guess I said it controls really well. It can, It's a little stiff, I guess. Would probably be the safe way to put it. It's kind of cool how it changed. Okay, so you get uh, one continue, it looks like. Okay. Well, let's try another go and see how far we can get. Realize ancient chicken. Okay, so it's the same thing as before. Okay. So we went down before, right? And then we went and got that key and we went to the left. Let's see if we can maximize our attempt a little better this time. All right. So, let's see here. Jump over the snake, get the treasures. That's not very maximizing of my time, is it now? So, just remember, no going off edges. I mean, like, you're fragile. 
fragile little man. So. Let's do this. Kinda like the guy, he looks kinda like Indiana, Indiana Jones. Did I say that already? Or might have. Alright, so we got those keys. I don't know what that treasure does. Uh, let me check the manual real quick. I wonder if it says. Amulet, jewel key, sword, torch. Wonder if that's a torch, jewels, or is that amulet? That must might be this an amulet. Hammer-shaped objects. Press button two to activate these, which will help Ham and Joe evade killer creatures. When he uses the amulet, all killer creatures turn gray and are disabled for several seconds. Oh, okay. So it's like a invincibility item for a little bit there. That's cool. Okay, so I want to go this way. Okay. Jump the spider. I don't like those spiders. They really are kind of creeping me out. I'm assuming I don't want to hit those chains. I haven't tried it yet, but let's not waste any extra lives. Just make a hunch. So I really kind of like the level's uh, tile backgrounds. Oh my goodness. See, that wasn't cool. All right. That was a major waste of a bunch of lives. Okay, here we go. That went much better than the first time. So, at least we're getting slightly better. Got a red key and two blue keys, and I think that's what we need to get through that one door. Oh yeah, no, now through here. Oh, I was pushing the wrong button for button two. Well, that's frustrating. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing so great. That's an amulet. I got an extra life, I think. So that's cool. At least I got that. Okay. Focus. So this game is pretty hard. Um, I like it though. I would have totally been into this as a kid. I was like super into Indiana Jones and um, like Pitfall on the Intellivision was one of my favorite games. So. Alright, well we've made it a little bit further, and I still have a continue. Um, something, right? Okay. Let's think about this. Do I want to... I feel like this is the way to go. <clears throat> It's shameful. I'm pretty bad at this, I guess. So. <laughs> Did I mention the controls are really stiff? You know, this is... Uh, 
This is one of the things that I remember specifically about the Sega Master System. So I had it as a kid, and I always assumed it was the controllers that were stiff, but really, it's... I think it's the games themselves. You gotta be kidding me. That was not worth getting those. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's really stiff to control. It's not... Doesn't work well, but anyways, like I was saying before, I died a whole bunch of times. Is I really like the uh, level tile system they have. I don't know, I just like that pixel art. It's really cool. And that guy almost hit me, so I must be careful. I was kind of hoping they couldn't hit you through there, but I hope wrong. Okay, can I fall? Oh my gosh. Well, what was I supposed to do there? Jump all the way across the rope, I bet. Well, what do we think? Should we give it one more time? One more try? Um, yeah, let's give it one more try. Alright. Okay, let's get this going here. Okay, one more try. We're getting better at it. So hopefully this last run will be a little bit cooler. So, I guess this, this would be a good time to take a quick break and talk about the Sega Master System a little bit. So, the Sega Master System if you don't know what the Sega Master System is, it was the 8-bit console from Sega that was meant to be the direct competitor to the Nintendo Entertainment System. So, uh, it's a very capable system. Uh, it has... Um, I don't think anyone could argue that it has a much better graphics than the Nintendo did. Um, their, their graphics are much... Uh, have a lot more color depth, and I think the sprites are a little bit can be a little bit bigger, as well as it doesn't have that annoying flickering that the Nintendo had. Uh, when you had too many sprites kind of grouped together, it'd get kind of flickery. Um, the Sega didn't do that. Um, it, like I said at the beginning of the stream here, their controller was fairly close to the same as the Nintendo. Um, and it had, uh, I wonder if I have mine handy. Let me show it. Let's see. So, I got all my cables and controllers in a baggie here, the system's sitting up on a shelf, but if you want to take a little quick look at the controller, as you can see it's very similar to the Nintendo. Um, it had this little joystick thing that you could add if you wanted, to, it just screws into place and then comes off. Um, I seem to remember actually kind of liking it. It basically allows you to kind of, I don't know, it's a little better. The D-pad wasn't as great as the Nintendo's. And then it had the two buttons on there, like A and B, but they were one and two. 
So that's the second Master System controller. Um, I never liked the controller quite as much as the Nintendo. But maybe it was the games. I always thought they were really stiff compared, but... Um, Yeah, I'm a little bit here. Um, let's get back to the game, though. So, yeah, the Sega Master System. Uh, I don't think it had quite as big a library as the NES. Um, let's see here if they have a list. Game library. Um, Looks like there were 341 game titles for the Sega Master System. Um, I think the NES um, games. The NES has 714, so it had about half the half of the total amount that the Nintendo had. So it definitely didn't have as big a library, but it had some really good games. And a lot of the games were pretty impressive because their graphics were a lot better than the NES could ever do. But, you know, it didn't win. Graphics, I guess, don't... I guess it's the one of the original proofs of concept that graphics don't make a game. So, But let's try playing this game again. Let's try one more run through and then we'll probably call, call the uh, stream a wrap. So. so if anyone's happy to watch this, uh, please feel free to subscribe on YouTube. Um, I plan to do a couple videos a week like this, um, at least one a week, um, but so far I've been hitting about two, two a week or so, so check out some of the other ones I've done so far. Um, I did a fun one where I played uh, Shadow Dancer for the Genesis, which is uh, like the sequel to Shinobi, it's a pretty good game. Okay, let's focus here. And I did Zombies Ate My Neighbors, I did Castlevania Bloodlines, and what else did I play? Um, what other game? Oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Hyperstone Heist for the Sega Genesis. So, I'm on a little Sega kick, I guess. Okay, I don't like that screen there, because those spiders just bug me. Yeah, this game is actually, I'm pretty happy with this, I like this game. I would have been really happy with this as a kid. Whew. Totally overshot that. Totally undershot that. It's a little hard to control how far you jump. You either jump up and down, and if you're pushing left or right, you just kind of jump the default amount. Like you can't like let go of the directional pad and jump less. You always kind of jump that amount. So, all right. Do I gotta remember to use that at an opportune time like right there. That's where it would be good. Yeah, this does remind me a lot of Pitfall too. Not Pitfall number two, but Pitfall as well. Mm -hmm. Much better. That was a good run. Okay. 
So here is where I want to use that. All right, well, I died one time instead of like four I did the last time. I can't get the amulet, so we'll just leave it. Can't get the diamond. Apparently you can't pick up any items when your inventory is full, even if they're just point, uh, point items. Oh well. I think I get a life. Yep. I think I got an extra life there. Something happened. I think it's a life at 10,000 points. Alright, now... This one, I'm just gonna skip those diamonds because I don't really care. I mean, I do, but I kind of feel like seeing more of the game instead of dying on this fire getting diamonds. So let's see how far we can get. I think I'm gonna go this way this time. Because those skeleton bouncing heads are over there. Get down. Yes, that was good. Right? Okay, now so now I'm theorizing that I need to jump across. <sighs> That's pretty cool. That was pretty exciting. <laughs> I pushed up. I pushed up. I pushed up. I, I don't know why that didn't work. Alright. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's pretty nifty. So now I have a bunch of swords. I'm good for a while, I'm getting hit by enemies. So that was like a good power up room. I don't understand what just happened. Hmm. I'm a little confused, I thought I was supposed to be... not get hurt when I have the... what the hell is that spear doing? <laughs> So apparently the swords don't work on the snakes, only on the guys that are moving. Maybe that's what it is. Hey, I got another... Oh, that's dead end. Not dead end, I need a red key, I should say. Oh, for God's sakes. Yeah, this game is hard. So I can't go back up. Jump across. I don't know if I want to go down there yet. What's over here? Oh, there's a red key. I don't really see how I'm going to get over there though without dying. That one, cool. <sighs> Wasted that. Alright, so... Oh, man. Okay, these no lights. Is this that level? I think so. I don't know what the heck's going on. I don't know if that's... Alright, well that's new. I haven't been here yet. Alright, I got it. I'll continue. Gotta jump two spiders? 
It's not even possible. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. That was bad. Okay. This game is very brutal, but I like it. I like it for that, but I also sort of don't like it. Um, that was close. You almost got me. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Mm hmm? Hmm. 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 Well, I did it. This isn't a glitch. This is a dark room. I think I need a torch or something. <laughs> this is the treasure room. Oh my gosh. Did I win? I don't think I won. But I think that was the treasure room. You have discovered the final resting spot of Tetsum Mok, the most feared warrior of his day. Pyramids in this region are populated by thousands of vampire bats which have thirsted for human blood for many years. Panama Joe would give them quite a feast. Oh, I see. Now I'm on level two. And I think... Huh. Okay. Well, I think I'm on level two now. I like uh, I defeated level level one or stage one, I guess. So, yay me! Pretty good. Uh, I took a leap of faith, which is what it said in the manual. It actually said I didn't read it, but it, uh, out loud it was um, to enter this final chamber. Daredevil Panama Joe must leap into the void. Once inside, you'll find several ropes and the legendary jewels all awaiting his grasp. In a matter of seconds, Joe must jump from rope to rope while trying to collect as many jewels as possible. But if beware, Montezuma has set a trap to defend his jewels. A set of pointed spears that come out of the floor and the ceiling. If Panama Joe touches a single point, you lose a life and all the points you accumulated while in the treasure room. So I didn't lose my points, so I think that I got everything I needed to move to the next level, so, yay. I actually beat at least one stage, I mean, it's all I'm going to do tonight, but, so, uh, all in all, I'd like to say that this game is pretty fun, um, I would definitely, if you've never played it and you're into kind of these platforming, um, type, um, Metroidvania, I don't know if I'd quite call it that, but because um, it's not very actiony, uh, it's very it's very slow moving, and you don't have weapons. And um, but I would definitely say if you've never played it and you like this type of platforming games like this, I would check it out. It's actually pretty fun. I'm probably gonna play it again. Um, I don't know if I'll do it on stream, but I think I'm gonna definitely play it again. So. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you have, thank you very much. Check me out on Retro uh, at Retro Gaming Dev on Twitter. You can see over there, it says it right somewhere over there, my finger. At Retro Gaming Dev on Twitter. Um, I post a lot of different stuff on there, and uh, it would be great to have you there and chat with you. Alright, thanks.